we have some special guests, as I mentioned, joining us in the studio. I'd like to introduce them. Uh, Seth Pajak and Elena Paulson. They are the founders of Vegan ESP, and that is a new vegan lifestyle website. They're going to tell us all about it. It's fantastic. I love it. I've been on the site. Uh, so want to welcome you guys to the program. How are you? Hi, Melody. It's great to be here. Thank you for having us. It's just great to be here. We're um, happy that we can be a part of this show. It's a wonderful show. We listen to it all the time. And um, we're going to talk also a little bit about some of Sonia's recipes that are on our website that uh, we talk that we've cooked and we can share how they Ooh. worked out. They're really good. Oh, <laughs> wonderful. And hey, Elena, how Hi, are Melody. you? Thanks for having us. We're really happy to be here. Yeah, and it's so nice. Uh, you know, as you said, you guys are also listeners, so you're kind of already part of the show, which is wonderful. Um, but tell us, uh, tonight we're going to talk about your uh, vegan lifestyle website. And um, on your website, you talk about a little bit about how this is kind of chronicling your life as vegan. So talk a little bit about why you started the website. Well, we started it initially, um, we have a lot of cookbooks, <laughs> right. and it's hard to remember what you've cooked and what you liked and what you did wrong and what you did right, so we started a spreadsheet, and a friend of ours told us, well, why don't you start blogging about your spreadsheet and how you do all this cooking and how you keep track of everything, and it just sort of grew from there, and once we started it, we were having so much fun, we added events, and you know, we started doing videos and other stories and features, and it's, it's really grown from there. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's such a great resource. And when did you guys become vegan? Uh, we've been vegan for, what was it, about three and a half years about now? Three years, or, yeah. Or so. Yeah, and I think um, in addition to that, what Elena said, being the inspiration of our website, uh, last year we went to the San Francisco Veg Fest, mm -hmm. and there we got to get up close and personal with a lot of wonderful vegan organizations. And um, we met people like Priscilla Farrell and Lee Hall from Friends of Animals. Uh, we met Don Moncrief from A Well Fed World, uh, Nathan Winograd, um, All American Vegan. Uh, we met the folks from Vegan Outreach and Farm, Farm Animal Rights movement mm -hmm. and you know the energy that we just kind of got from talking to them and meeting them it really inspired us and they're doing a veg fest here in atlanta and we are so excited about that because we think the same energy and inspiration is definitely going to come from that and we want to encourage anybody who's into animal rights into the the vegan diet and lifestyle to definitely check that out so I really love the section that you do uh, called Feed Me. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that, that's what grew out of our spreadsheet. <laughs> it's, it's what we eat for dinner, mostly dinners. Occasionally I'll include breakfast and lunch if we do something a little bit fancy um, for breakfast or lunch. But it's, it's every day we just kind of write about which recipes we used. I link to the authors, the cookbook authors' websites. I will not post someone else's recipe without their permission. So right. you won't find actual recipes on there, but you can find them on the cook's websites. And we just sort of review the recipes and what worked, what didn't work, um, what I need to do differently the next time. And we rate them based on like how well we like them on a scale of one to five. Yeah, I so, love that part. And there's, mm -hmm. there's almost a year's worth out there so far. And it's, 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 not, it's not that hard to keep up with. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. You Wait, know? do you do that every night? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel like I just try to make one big thing and just eat it for as many nights as I can or then make something <laughs> frozen. So, I mean, I'm just impressed that you actually use a recipe every night and are that adventurous. Yeah, we, we cook every night, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a labor of love. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, one thing I tell people, another reason why we did this, because, um, you know, we're not authors or anything like that um, per se. We just wanted to show people, especially like at work and our family, mm -hmm. like, you know, this isn't crazy. This isn't out in left field. I mean, this is really doing doable, it's accessible, mm -hmm. and we love showing the pictures of the food that we cook, and then they say, oh my God, that looks good, and they're so surprised, you know, they're like, they're, and, and, and see, that's the thing, we're trying to take away some of the mystery of what it is to be vegan and eat a plant-based diet, and make it look more appealing to people who, you know, maybe think of it as something like just beyond them or out there, or, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that, that's kind of our goal, is to, is to build a bridge to make it a little more accessible to people. Yeah, yeah, and you're exactly right. There, not. I mean, it, it certainly is going away, but there has been some shroud of mystery around how do vegans live. Um, and, and most of the vegans I know, I mean, we we all we do is think about food. And I know Elena, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, and that's all we talk about. Yeah. You mentioned that you actually <laughs> love to read cookbooks. I do too. I read them. I love yeah. them. And I know I've mentioned on the show, Carrie, 
Um, if you've ever wondered, driven by an animal rights protest, and you see people holding signs and talking to each other, 99.9% .9 of the time they're talking about food. Mm -hmm. Vegans love food. Is that oh, true? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the things I say to my friends at work is uh, in adopting a plant-based uh, diet and lifestyle, we have actually improved our quality of life. Um, I've had health screenings where my cholesterol has gone down, my blood pressure has gone down. Uh, but the thing is, we care more about about what we eat and how to make it interesting and exciting and we're motivated and inspired to do that on a on a daily basis so I mean we love food and we love I think it's it's like a game to us a little bit you know <laughs> when we make like uh, like the uh, fettuccine alfredo sauce on uh, the second opinion website that Sonia has that is so good and it looks delicious and I tell you what I don't think anybody could tell it apart from anything wow. made out of dairy I mean it is just and, and, and that's kind of the game you know the trick it's like aha uh -huh, we can make your food but we can make it without dairy and it's just as good so that's fun and i think too and i think this is probably an experience common to a lot of vegans that we eat a lot more variety now than we yeah, ever did before that's true. you know it's we've branched out our typical meals that we'll have in a week are so different right. than they were three years ago yeah, it's, it's, you know. it's so true. I mean, because you never think when you just go through your life, eating is such a habit mm -hmm. for most people that you don't deviate. But it really, I've fallen in love with food. I oh, really no. have. Oh, absolutely. The idea of it, the different textures. And, um, you know, nowadays I try so many different ethnic foods. Mm -hmm. And do you yeah. find that you do that as well? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, um, well, we have theme nights, you know, <laughs> there's do. the Indian come theme. Come your house. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's Indian and then there's Asian and then there's Mexican. Mexican and there's it's easy to make a vegan variation because you know a lot of cultures don't really have meat as their center point of their meal oh, I mean it's point. it's really a lot of the more modern Western cultures that mm -hmm. somehow have incorporated that and like oh you have to have it well you don't and a lot of other people for really thousands of years have been just fine without it and so um, there's a lot of good stuff out there definitely yeah and you guys do a really good job of also uh, letting people know what's new um, in, in the whole vegan industry lifestyle, like the the new bakeries and things like yeah. that. Yeah, we do. We like to profile, especially local businesses, but we really like to help support vegan businesses. When Doe Bakery opened up, um, we were really happy to talk about going there and having lunch there and posting mm -hmm. pictures of what we ate. Um, right. We did a feature story on Dolce Vegan. Um, we, we you know got some questions answered from them of how they run their business, what inspired them, and a lot of really gorgeous pictures of their cakes and cookies mm. and sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. We had to do a lot of research for that. We went we went there a few times to make sure we got yeah, it just right. Nice. You know? <laughs> if you haven't had uh, the breakfast sandwich at Dolce Vegan, I highly recommend it. It's really good. Yeah, and Dough Bakery is really, really yeah. good as well. So if you hadn't had a chance to check it out, please do because yeah. it's a treat. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, if you are just tuning in, you are listening to Second Opinion Radio, secondopinionradio.com. We have the pleasure of having with us the founders of Vegan ESP in the studio here with us tonight, Seth and Elena. And uh, they're talking all about their vegan lifestyle website. And I know folks are trying to call in with questions, so uh, which we probably won't have time to take. However, um, guys, your website is veganesp.com so people can log on, That's correct. get the meal plans. Mm -hmm. Um, and, yeah. and see all the different other resources, great resources you yeah. have on there as well. Right. Um, one more thing I'd like to add um, is that in addition to that, we also do um, activism. Um, we work um, with Georgia Animal Rights and Protection, and on, on multiple occasions we've gone out to their day of actions and shot videotape and done interviews with them, and we've posted that on our website. And we just recently found out last night that it's been picked up by other websites oh, in, right. in, in yeah. regards to activism. And... Um, you know, so we want to show people that we can get out there and speak with a voice. Uh, recently, there was an event at the Georgia Aquarium mm -hmm. where folks mm -hmm. were um, protesting uh, the Georgia Aquarium's idea of trying to, you know, import more beluga whales from the wild. And it's it's good because we're trying to show people that, you know, people are speaking out against this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And they're not just taking it. And there is a sense of community. And it's wonderful because you see, you know, all different types of people and genders and ages and races. And it's wonderful because they're coming together and they're speaking out for the animals so we're trying to highlight that yeah, it's wonderful it, it's good to go to the the animal rights events and 
advocacy because I know for me personally as an as an animal rights person it can be really hard mm -hmm. you know it, I get really emotional right, and it's depressing. yeah and yeah. It, it is it can be really depressing so to be around other people who don't look at you like you're crazy when you know you see a picture of a pig in a gestation crate and you start crying and other people understand that it's it's really um supportive environment to for vegans to be around other people who feel the same way yeah i agree and the thing is i think i really believe in my heart that um you know most people because the media really shields and this is of course uh, dr freeman's specialty so you might chime mm -hmm. in but the media really shields the public from what goes on with animals mm -hmm. i truly yeah. believe most people, if they saw what was really going on, they would have that reaction, but they're really shielded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then also we have kind of false information in terms of all the advertising that kind of makes the circulation of dead animal bodies seem just pleasurable and normal so that right. it goes unquestioned. So, And the Food Network, for example, all you learn about animals on that is that they taste good and we are not asked to look at them within an ethical framework. And in general, when I am teaching with my students and we're complaining about all the problems with commercial media these days and how they don't focus a lot of times on things that are substantive in general. Um, sometimes I feel bad. I'm like, oh, my students are going into these industries. I feel bad. But then I suggest they do the things which our guests here in the <laughs> studio are doing, which is we don't have to just work for large corporations. I mean, yes, you could go in those corporations, the media corporations, and try to reform them, and, and that's important. But you can also create your own websites and blogs. Mm -hmm. And here, uh, our guests in the studio have shown that, you know, they are producing their own media that shows activism in a positive light. Yeah. Whereas, because of course, you know, you right. might be protesting at the aquarium and you might or might not get any attention from the local news media. And then they also might portray you in a way that you think is unfair. Mm -hmm. At least if you have your own activist version of <laughs> yeah. it, it's a more sympathetic portrayal, like we try to do here on the show, give activists a sympathetic voice. Yeah, and it's also a more accurate portrayal yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, the website again, veganesp.com. Uh, what's been the, the, the most fun about creating this lifestyle website? What have you enjoyed most about this? The, I think um, the networking, you know, mm -hmm. the wonderful people that we've met. And I have to say that uh, the, the main thing that really got this thing up and rolling was um, our friend Brett runs a group called ATL Vegan Drinks. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it's on Facebook. You can just Google it. And it's a great place where folks just get together. And um, not everybody drinks, but we always get together and have dinner. Yeah. And um, we have met so many wonderful, mm -hmm. nice people there and that we stay in touch outside of that particular group. Mm -hmm. So I would say the best thing has definitely been meeting folks. We, we've met you guys, right. we've met the people at uh, Georgia Animal Rights and Protection. That was really wonderful and helpful. So to me, I think it's the sense of community that we've uh, started to, to be a part of and to grow a little bit as well. What do you think? Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that's, that's really been a, a big thing. When we first went vegan, I was really concerned that we were going to be isolated mm -hmm. in this little bubble and because it's such a small percentage of the population. Yeah. I mean, it's it's grown a lot in the last mm -hmm. two years, but it's it's still a small percentage of the population. And so the first thing I did was I hopped on Twitter and I started, I just did a search for vegan and, and met a ton of people in the social media area, which is how we found out about vegan drinks oh, great. and ended up meeting a lot of friends in real life, <laughs> which was really yeah. cool. So I encourage definitely get in the social media, search for vegan, get out there and meet other people. And it's perhaps ironic mm -hmm. that I even as a vegan that you can use that as a way to make friends when people are worried, like you mm -hmm. said, that going vegan is going to isolate them from their friends. It's important that you stay yeah. in touch with your meat eating <laughs> friends and family. You still should go out to eat with them yeah. and do all the same things. But you actually like, I, that's how I met Melody mm -hmm. and, and Sonia and became a part of the show is because I went to a farm sanctuary walkathon and mm -hmm. different things, which I found out about from Cosmo's yeah. vegan shop. And it's just <laughs> suddenly I like when I moved to Atlanta, I created a network because of caring about animals I met all these other caring people yeah. so it's not isolating it's actually I like the word you use community oh absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. and I know you guys are uh, really involved in the walk for farm animals this year you want to talk a little bit about that yeah we signed up about a month or so ago to do the farm sanctuary walk for farm animals it's um, this year it's in um, Piedmont Park on October 20th and We've, in, we've got a few friends that have signed up that we knew that we've met through Vegan Drinks <laughs> um, who are going to be joining us on the walk. And then two new people signed up today, and um, I've got their contact information. And I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they heard about us either on Facebook or Twitter and have joined our team. 
um, but they're complete strangers to us, so which is kind of cool. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to meet even more people. If you want to join us and come out and walk with us, you're more than welcome. Or if you want to donate to the cause, just whatever you can spare. I mean, that you can do all that through our website. Mm-hmm. We have a link where you can do that. And um, we're just real excited. We think Farm Sanctuary is a fantastic thing in the sense that it gives a refuge for farm animals and it provides a way for people to see that, you know, these are really creatures of great beauty and strength and that we shouldn't be taking advantage of them just to to feed ourselves when we don't really need to. And so we think Farm Sanctuary is a really great thing. Plus Dolce Vegan and Doe Bakery are both bringing treats for the walkers. So (laughs) that's that's always a good motivator. That's a great great motivator. That's wonderful. And I also uh, really, and we talk about Farm Sanctuary, we've talked about them often on the show. We've um, had the founder on. I, I also like the fact that they really focus on legislation. Oh, yeah. Which is great. And they've done a lot of work, as you mentioned, around the gestation crates and really uh, helping animals um, have more rights, particularly Mm -hmm. the farm animals. Like downed animal issues are a big one for them when animals are getting dragged to the slaughterhouse because they're too sick and injured. They keep trying to make that illegal and sometimes it is and then it's reversed back. I can never keep track. Mm -hmm. But they keep working on that. And and tonight uh, we actually are going to hear a very short podcast about the story of a downed cow because I think it's important to kind of circle back uh, and and remind everybody why, you know, we do this and why it's so important. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, guys, uh, we have a few more minutes here. Um, uh, What kind of questions do you get about being vegan or what do you, what do people generally ask you? Well, the, the, you know, the first one is people are like, um, you know, where do you get your protein from mm-hmm. and all this kind of thing. And a lot of people just don't know that much about nutrition. And they seem to think because they've always been told that you have to eat, you know, dairy and meat, that somehow you're going to be less healthy without it. When truly, quite the contrary, is, is, the, is the truth. And so, um, I mean, that's one of the things we get a lot. Um, although I will say this, that more and more people, a lot of the times people that we meet at the meetups, um, they tell us that they've gone vegan for health reasons mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the reason and then they tell us how they've had these issues these medical issues that have turned around and that they're never going to go back and um, so that's the thing a lot of people don't do it always for the animal rights reason um, another big thing with me is also environmentalism because oh, there's a, a yeah. huge yeah. environmental advantage to eating a plant-based diet as opposed to um, one based on meat it takes a lot less energy and resources to live off of plants because you get a lot of waste when you when you try to feed cattle for food and um you know so those are the things i tend to talk about when people ask me about it and like i said the biggest misconception is somehow that we're just not going to get enough nutrients right yeah yeah, that's that's very true and i you know a lot of people are very curious about what do you eat you know and and the assumption is always well you eat nothing but tofu and no, we eat a lot more than just tofu. Don't forget salad. Salad, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you, I but do you do that. actually have, and I, I had it in my notes to mention because I thought it was so wonderful. A tofu manifesto <laughs> on your site. I <laughs> love you that. You know, that. That you was have, actually people born, have to read that. It was born kind of out of my frustration when we first started cooking a lot with tofu of not having the first idea what to do with it and having it come out really, really bad. Mm-hmm. And bad tofu is awful. And <laughs> you know, and we knew we liked tofu because you can get it out in restaurants and it's so good so I, I just started doing a lot more research and the secret is marinating it yeah. um, <laughs> now we know so yeah, yeah it, that was I just wanted to save other people the frustration yeah. wonderful that's really what the whole website is about is trying to impart some of the knowledge that we have acquired through our journey to maybe save some other people a few steps here and there yeah. or wherever just to make it kind of a little bit easier show the things that we really enjoy different products that we like and a lot of this is how we have um, anal- analogous meals to meals that would have meat or mm-hmm. dairy, like right. like the uh, fettuccine alfredo um, on your website, which is really good. And, you know, um, one of the things that, like, there's always these few items that you're like, okay, I, how am I going to get this now? And so I was really concerned about garlic bread. I was like, how am I going to get my garlic bread? <laughs> you're concerned about garlic yeah. bread. He was worried that there was not going to be so any like, garlic bread. You're talking this. about cheese or something. Yeah. Right. So... <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, I do a little bit of research, and I got a great recipe using basically just extra virgin olive oil, mm-hmm. some uh, fresh garlic, and some seasonings, and wow, it's, it is so good. All awesome. my um, friends and family, whoever have it, regardless whether they're vegetarian, vegan or not, they love it. And um, yeah. we had a similar experience with potato wedges. Yeah. And <laughs> we were like, because, you know, we don't, we're like, we don't want to go to the grocery store and get those kind that they deep fry with the chicken and everything. And then we found this wonderful recipe on how to bake them with paprika and smoked paprika. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that sounds good. fabulous. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, folks, you have to go. If you want more information, you will have to check it out on uh, Vegan ESP for more information. We're going to cut away to a quick break.